The Taylor Model C606 Heat Treatment Combination Shake and Soft Serve Freezer provides a daily heating and cooling cycle to safely maintain dairy products up to two weeks before complete disassembly and cleaning is required. Read the operator's manual before operating or performing any maintenance on your equipment. In the event you should require technical assistance, please contact your local authorized Taylor distributor. Before performing daily opening procedures, check the display panel for any error messages. Normally, the display is blank unless an operational fault has occurred. If a fault has been detected, investigate the cause and follow the instructions on the display before proceeding with the opening procedures. Setup. Make sure your hands are clean and sanitized before performing setup. With the drain plugs closed, check the water level in the two heated topping wells. Fill the wells with water to the indicating mark on the bottom of the well. Place the topping heaters in the on position by touching the topping heater symbols. Caution! As soon as the heaters are turned on, the topping wells will begin heating. This heating process will take approximately two and one half hours to reach temperature. The water level in the wells should be checked daily. Prepare a pail of an approved 100 ppm sanitizing solution with warm water following the manufacturer's specifications. Sanitize the topping pumps by placing the entire pump assembly in the pail of sanitizing solution. Pump the solution through to thoroughly sanitize the pump. Fill the topping containers with topping. Place the caramel and fudge topping containers in the heated wells. Place the remaining two topping containers in the unheated wells. Cover the containers. Sanitize the two topping ladles and place in the cold topping containers. Fill the cup dispensers, cup lid holder, and cone dispenser. Shake side. When the heating cycle is complete, the heat cycle symbols will no longer be illuminated and the machine will automatically enter the standby mode. Remove the syrup valve retainers, the syrup hole plugs and the O-ring, and the valve cap from the freezer door. Remove the shake cup holder, the front drip tray, and the splash shield, and sanitize all of the parts. Return to the freezer with sanitizing solution. With a pail below the door spout, use the door spout brush to clean the door spout, the bottom of the driven spinner and spinner blade, and the syrup line fittings. Brush clean each item for a total of 60 seconds, repeatedly dipping the brush in sanitizing solution. With the syrup port brush, brush each syrup port hole 10 to 15 times. Fill a squeeze bottle with sanitizing solution. With a pail beneath the door, insert the tube end of the squeeze bottle into the syrup port and squeeze the bottle firmly. This procedure should be performed for at least 10 seconds per port. Reinstall the syrup valve retainers. Install the restrictor cap on the freezer door spout. With the pail still beneath the door, remove the syrup nose fitting from the syrup line fitting by turning it counterclockwise. Hold the syrup fittings in an up position to minimize syrup loss. Remove the duckbill valve and O-ring from the syrup nose fitting. Using the white end of the double-ended brush, scrub the inside of the syrup nose fitting to remove any residual particles. Rinse the syrup nose fitting thoroughly with sanitizing solution. Using a clean towel, gently wipe any syrup from the duckbill valve. Use sanitizing solution to thoroughly rinse the duckbill valve. Install the duckbill valve into the syrup nose fitting with the flat end aligned with the open slot in the fitting. Replace the duckbill valve if it is damaged or extends past the syrup nose fitting slot. Install the O-ring on the syrup nose fitting. Install the syrup nose fitting into the syrup line fitting and then hand tighten it until it is snug. 
The duckbill valve must be wet when the syrup nose fitting is assembled on the syrup line fitting. The tip of the duckbill valve must be flat to seal the syrup line. Repeat these procedures for all of the syrup flavors. Each syrup flavor must be primed to purge the air out of the syrup lines. Touch the calibration symbol to display the menu options. The screen will display the calibration menu options. Touch the auto symbol to scroll the arrow to Syrup Prime. Touch the calibration symbol to enter the Syrup Prime mode. Touch the corresponding syrup flavor symbol. When the flavor symbol is illuminated, the syrup pump for the selected flavor will start running at maximum speed. When a steady stream of syrup is flowing from the syrup valve and all the air has been purged from the syrup line, touch any syrup flavor symbol to stop the pump. After priming is complete, exit the syrup prime mode by touching the calibration symbol. Sanitize the syrup valve nose fittings using the squeeze bottle filled with sanitizing solution. Lubricate the O-ring. Raise the syrup valve retainer. Install the syrup valve. Push the syrup valve retainer down to hold the valve in place. Repeat this procedure for each syrup valve. Do not install an empty syrup line in the freezer door. Insert a syrup port plug in the door whenever a syrup line is not in use. Using a clean, sanitized towel, wipe down the freezer door, the front panel, the area around the bottom of the freezer door, and any other areas that demonstrate a buildup of either moisture or food substance. Install the shake cup holder, the front drip tray, and the splash shield. When you are ready to resume normal operation, touch the auto symbol. When auto start is enabled, the machine will automatically exit the standby mode and start both sides in the auto mode at a designated time each day. Placing the machine in auto should be performed approximately 15 minutes prior to serving product. Soft serve side. Return to the freezer with a small amount of sanitizing solution. Dip the door spout brush into the sanitizing solution and brush clean the door spout and bottom of the draw valve. Brush clean each item for a total of 60 seconds, repeatedly dipping the brush in sanitizing solution. Using a clean towel, wipe down the freezer door, the front panel, the area around the bottom of the freezer door, and any other areas that demonstrate buildup of either moisture or food substance. When you are ready to resume normal operations, touch the auto symbol. Syrup calibration. Calibrating the syrup flow should be performed weekly when the syrup system is cleaned. It is vital that the correct amount of syrup be incorporated into the frozen mix to obtain a quality shake. To determine the rate of syrup flow, you will need a calibration cup indicating fluid ounces. The proper rate of syrup flow is one fluid ounce of syrup in five seconds. For thick viscosity shake syrups, the proper syrup flow rate is one fluid ounce plus or minus one eighth fluid ounce in seven seconds. Once this rate is set, the correct amount of syrup will be blended with the shake base regardless of the size of shake served. The syrup lines must be properly primed with syrup to eliminate air in the line before the calibration procedure is performed. Touch the calibration symbol to display the menu options. Touch the auto symbol or the optional flavor symbol to scroll the arrow to syrup calibration. Touch the calibration symbol to enter the syrup calibration mode. Disconnect the syrup valve from the freezer door. Hold the small portion of the calibration cup under the valve for the flavor to be calibrated. Touch the corresponding flavor select symbol to activate the syrup pump and start the flow of syrup. When the syrup level measures one ounce, touch the same flavor select symbol to stop the syrup flow. Verify the level of syrup in the cup. Repeat these steps for the remaining syrup flavors. 
exit the calibration mode by touching the calibration symbol. Daily Closing Procedures Shake Side It is important that the level of mix in the mix hopper be high enough to cover the agitator panel. The mix low light must not be illuminated. Both sides of the freezer must be in the auto or standby mode before the heat cycle may be started. If the brush clean counter display has counted down to one day, do not add mix. The machine must be disassembled and brush cleaned within 24 hours. Remove the hopper cover, the shake cup holder, the splash shield, and the drip pans. Select the calibration symbol to stop agitator movement for 10 seconds. Select the calibration symbol again to exit the calibration mode. Remove the agitator from the mix hopper and the restrictor cap from the shake freezer door spout. Take the agitator, the hopper cover, the shake cup holder, the drip pans, the front drip tray, the splash shield, the restrictor cap, the syrup hole plugs, the spout cap, and the spout cap O-ring to the sink for further cleaning and sanitizing. Rinse these parts in cool, clean water. Prepare a small amount of an approved 100 ppm cleaning solution and use it to brush clean these parts. Place the restrictor cap, the front drip tray, the shake cup holder, and the splash shield on a clean, dry surface to air dry overnight or until the heating cycle is complete. Install the agitator back onto the agitator drive shaft housing. It's important to know that if you do not install the agitator correctly, the machine will fail the heat cycle and will lock out in the morning. Replace the hopper cover. With a pail below the door spout, brush clean the syrup ports in the freezer door, the door spout, and the syrup line fittings. Brush each item for a total of 60 seconds. With the syrup port brush, brush each syrup port hole 10 to 15 times. Fill a squeeze bottle with cleaning solution. With the pail beneath the door, insert the tube end of the squeeze bottle into the syrup ports and squeeze the bottle firmly. This procedure should be performed for at least 10 seconds per port. Place the spout cap O-ring in the spout cap. Fill the spout cap with sanitizing solution. Install the spout cap over the end of the door spout. Replace the syrup valve retainers. Install the syrup hole plugs in the syrup ports in the freezer door. Lower the retainer pins to secure the hole plugs in the door. Fill the squeeze bottle with sanitizing solution. Squeeze the bottle and thoroughly rinse the slot of each syrup nose fitting. Wipe the outside of each syrup nose fitting with a clean towel. Soft serve side. Remove the hopper cover. Select the calibration symbol to stop agitator movement for 10 seconds. Remove the agitator from the mix hopper. Take the agitator and the hopper cover to the sink for further cleaning and sanitizing. Rinse these parts in cool, clean water. Install the agitator back into the agitator drive shaft housing. Replace the hopper cover. Return to the freezer with a small amount of cleaning solution. Brush clean the door spout and bottom of the draw valve. Reinstall the two short drip pans in the rear panel, the long drip pan in the front panel, and the two notched drip pans in the left and right side panels. Syrup system, scheduled maintenance. Syrup line cleaning and sanitizing weekly. Remove the pickup tubes from the syrup containers. Wipe the outside of the tubes with a clean towel. Place the pickup and the syrup hose into the pail. Raise the retainer and remove the syrup valve from the freezer door. Select the calibration symbol on the control panel to display the menu options. Select the flavor select symbol for the corresponding syrup valve to start the flow of cleaning solution through the syrup line. Allow the cleaning solution to flow until the syrup is flushed from the line. Touch the flavor selector symbol to stop the flow of the solution. Remove the pickup tubes from the pail of sanitizing solution. 
Place all the pickup tubes into the syrup containers. Syrup topping pump disassembly. Before first use and after use weekly, disassemble and clean the pump by flushing and rinse it in warm water. Place the lower end of the pump into the water container. Remove the plunger assembly from the pump body by turning the plunger nut counterclockwise. To remove the knob, use the washer to compress the spring toward the knob. Compress it enough to grab onto the plunger with your hand for support. Begin removing the knob with your other hand. Then remove the O-ring and remove the plunger nut from the plunger tube. Remove the spring and washer, the seal assembly, the plunger tube, and the insert from the plunger assembly. Remove the seal O-ring from the seal. Remove the discharge tube lock nut by turning it counterclockwise. Remove the lid by sliding it off the discharge tube. Remove the cylinder from the valve body. Remove the discharge tube from the valve body. Remove the 1 and 5 16 inch O-ring from the valve body and remove the 1 inch O-ring from the discharge tube. Wash and scrub all of the parts in an approved cleaning solution. Insert the black shielded brush through the tip of the discharge tube. Move the brush back and forth to scrub the tip of the discharge tube. Advance the brush completely through the discharge tube and pull the brush from the bottom of the tube. Insert the black shielded brush into the top side of the inlet valve. Scrub this area well, especially around the steel ball. Insert the black shielded brush into the top side of the outlet valve and scrub around the steel ball. Perform the same scrubbing procedures for the bottom side of the inlet valve. Rinse all the parts with clear water and then sanitize the parts and allow them to air dry. To assemble the pump, lubricate and install the seal O-ring into the seal. Install the seal assembly into the piston end of the plunger assembly. Install the washer and spring onto the plunger assembly. Install the plunger insert into the plunger tube by positioning the end of the insert with the beveled edge and smaller hole to enter into the plunger tube first. Install the plunger nut onto the plunger tube. Install the plunger tube assembly onto the plunger assembly by inserting the plunger assembly into the larger opening on the plunger tube. Push the plunger assembly, compressing the spring until the threaded end of the stem projects through the smaller opening on the plunger tube and the insert. Install the knob onto the threaded end of the plunger assembly. Hold the plunger assembly so that the plunger tube, compressing the spring, is pulled toward the piston end as far as it will go. Tighten the knob by turning it clockwise. Lubricate and install the one inch O-ring onto the groove provided on the discharge tube. Lubricate and install the one and five sixteenth inch O-ring into the valve body. Install the discharge tube onto the smaller opening in the valve body by aligning the flats on the discharge tube with the locking grooves on the valve body. Push down the discharge tube until it is seated into the valve body opening. Install the cylinder onto the larger opening in the valve body by tilting the cylinder away from the discharge tube and sliding the widest section of flange under the center locking groove on the valve body. Align the tabs on the cylinder with the locking grooves on the valve body. Turn the cylinder clockwise until the tabs fully engage into the locking grooves on the valve body. Install the lid by inserting the discharge tube through the smaller hole in the lid. Slide the lid until the larger hole fits around the top of the cylinder. The discharge tube lock nut will secure the lid in position. Install the discharge tube lock nut. Tighten the lock nut by turning it clockwise. Lubricate and install the plunger assembly into the cylinder opening in the pump body. Tighten the plunger nut by turning it clockwise. Disassembly. 
To disassemble the model C606, the following items will be needed. Two cleaning and sanitizing pails, one for each side of the freezer. The necessary brushes provided with freezer. Cleaning solution. Sanitizing solution. Single service towels. Parts trays. To drain the product from the freezing cylinders on both sides of the machine, the steps will be the same. Make sure the heater topping switches are in the off position. For the shake side only, remove the hopper cover and agitator. Take these parts to the sink to wash, rinse, and sanitize them thoroughly. With a pail beneath the door spout, touch the wash and pump symbols to open the draw valve. For the shake side, touch any flavor selection symbol to open the draw valve. Drain the product from the freezing cylinder and the mix hopper. When the flow of product stops, touch the wash and pump symbols, canceling the wash and pump modes. The shake draw valve will automatically close when the wash operation is canceled. Remove the locking clip, the mix feed tube, the pump clip, and the assembled air mix pump. Repeat these procedures for the soft serve side. Pour two gallons of cool, clean water into the shake mix hopper. With the white hopper brush, scrub the mix hopper, the mix level sensing probes, and the outside of the agitator drive shaft housing. Using the white bristle brush, brush clean the mix inlet hole. Do not brush clean the mix inlet hole while the machine is in the wash mode. With a mix pail beneath the door spout, touch the wash symbol. Push the flavor symbol on the shake side to open the draw valve on the freezer door. Drain all the rinse water from the door spout. Touch the wash symbol, canceling the wash mode. The shake draw valve will automatically close when the wash operation is canceled. Repeat this procedure using clean, warm water until the water being discharged is clear. Repeat these steps for the soft serve side. Failure to remove the parts for brush cleaning and lubrication will result in damage to the machine. These parts must be removed every 14 days or the machine will lock out and will not operate. Make sure the power switch is in the off position and then remove the hole plugs from the syrup ports. Remove the restrictor cap from the bottom of the door spout. Remove the spinner blade from the bottom of the door spout by lifting up the locking collar on the spinner coupling and pulling down the blade. Remove the hand screws, the freezer door, the beater assembly, the drive shaft, the drive shaft seal, and the scraper blades from the freezing cylinder. Remove the freezer door O-ring, front bearing, and the draw valve spinner assembly. Remove the driven spinner from the draw valve by grasping the draw valve and pulling the driven spinner out. Remove the spinner shaft seal. Remove the two O-rings from the draw valve. From the shake pump cylinder, remove the retaining pin, the mix inlet adapter, the pump gasket, the valve cap, and the piston. Remove the O-ring from the piston and valve cap. Remove the pump drive shaft from the drive hub in the rear wall of the mix hopper. Remove the two small O-rings and one large O-ring from the pump drive shaft. Be sure the power switch is in the off position and then remove the hand screws, the freezer door, the beater, the scraper blades, and the drive shaft with the drive shaft seal from the freezing cylinder. Remove the scraper blade clips from the scraper blades. From the soft serve pump cylinder, remove the retaining pin, the mix inlet adapter, the valve cap, the pump gasket, and the piston. Remove the O-ring from the piston and valve cap. 
Remove the freezer door gasket, the front bearing, the pivot pin, the draw handle, and the draw valve. Remove the three O-rings.